And I remember having to go to 72nd Street. Uh, that's where the priest gave us uh, our lessons, communion lessons, and so on and so forth. And his name was uh, Father Yonash. And uh, I never heard him speak Czech, and I just want to say, well, Fridays were meatless, but I remember going to, they're on a Friday for all lessons, and he's chomping on a chicken. Like, so, so, much, so much for meatless Fridays. <laughs> I, the, uh, the chapel on York Avenue that Paul just mentioned uh, actually belonged to Our Lady of Perpetual Help on 61st Street. We called it the Czech, ch the Czech Church, a magnificent, magnificent church. And uh, in their downstairs, uh, there's an upstairs church, of course, and then there was a downstairs one also. <clears throat> they had original uh, stained glass from the Czech, from Czechoslovakia at that time. But it, it was connected, the chapel and our lady. Yes. Yeah. Can, can, I, can I just add a political, historical note to, to these restaurant bars and, and churches and funeral homes? Uh, <laughs> uh, the most important Czechoslovak political uh, association, Council of Free Czechoslovakia, uh, which was established in 1948 uh, after the, the February takeover in Czechoslovakia, the Council of Free Czechoslovakia used to meet not only in this building, but exactly in this room in the 1980s regularly. I just wanted to describe what kind of, of shape this building was. There was the roof was leaking, the, the walls were all molded up, the, the, there was no elevator of course, the stairs were all, almost unusable, there was no heat, and um, when uh, we wanted to have the meeting here, we had to ask the housekeeper Keeper, Mr. Pecha, I believe was his name, to open the building and he would bring a gas stove to, to heat up the room. So I just want to add that it was just a high time when uh, we uh, arranged the transfer of the building in the very dilapidated condition to, to the Czech government in uh, 1991. We have one last question back there. Actually, our theater company used to have shows here with the microphones coming to you. Uh, I'll just add to, to Vlado's contribution here. We had two shows here when it was a decrepit, rundown building, and we sometimes had a show that started on the first floor and went and had scenes on every floor because it was all our own building. So it would have been much better to keep it that way with the pigeons in the ballroom and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably on. have an answer and a statement. Uh, I believe that you said that the Slovak congregation still meets while none of the Czech congregations still meet at any of those churches. Not that the Slovak church took over the Czech property. Isn't that correct? Or that was maybe the, the introduction. There's still an active Slovak congregation on the Upper East Side. Not right, that the, it was, there is a Czech congregation that meets in a church in Astoria. They don't own the whole church, but it does meet. Um, and my statement is, I think everyone here is very lucky because uh, my husband is a younger Czech immigrant and we have children and there is no way to introduce them to the Czech, Slovak, and Rusin culture there in such a rich... There is a Czech school in a story. No, I, I know. Yeah. But it's much, the scale of it is I see. Yeah. small, and there are Czechs and Slovaks, Rusins, all throughout New York City. And I don't know how many there are, but certainly many more than go to that school, yeah. but they're no, not... You're right. Those of us who grew up here as kids, we were fortunate. I, right, I mean, I speak the language today. Right. You know, we spoke it at home, but still, uh, you know, we spoke it here, and naturally the community was Czech, and we had Czech people in, in the Sokols, and so on and so forth. And I, I want to add also that when the, this hall uh, fell into disarray and the plays were no longer um, done here, then we would perform at Sokol, TJ Sokol, on 71st Street. So, uh, you know, the community helped each other out. So. And, and there was no shortage of bars. <laughs> yeah, what Vít uh, reminds me, and uh, Vlado said that uh, 
there was a, you know, uh, this building was in very bad condition. I remember I opened my construction company and uh, because it was my idea uh, in the future to build my own restaurant. And uh, I was working here actually, I was the one who was demolishing the, uh, there was a shooting gallery downstairs, there was a bowling gallery downstairs. And the fourth floor, fourth and fifth floor, was renting a lady who was doing advertisement for uh, different kind of uh, channels of TV. And I remember one day they were. Uh, she always called me. We put up, uh, put up a temporary wall, and, and they put up special kind of tiles. And then came ice skater, figure skating lady, and they were, uh, you know, rolling the advertisement. And they repeated that. It still wasn't okay. Finally, the Ice skater, the, uh, the, the girl was so deadly tired. Finally, they said, Oh, now it's gonna be okay. And in the last moment, because there was a crack in the wall, flew inside a pigeon, and they have to start over again. <laughs> well, and I just, uh, that's what gave me the idea, because uh, uh, I did not have to feel what pro sebe, sorry, jak tady říkali, jo. So I decided, uh, uh, and uh, all these uh, restaurant owner, Ruč, Vašata, Holeček, they were excellent people, but I, when I left, I always, it was always on a handshake, but I explained to them, I want to learn English. So I went to Hotel Plaza, because there used to be beverage and food manager, Bedia Havelka, and his parents used to own uh, Hotel Arco in Praha, and I used to work there. So I went there, and uh, I asked him for the job, and he said, well, we don't need it, but uh, I will hire you. And he told the chef, is he no good? Throw him out, don't even tell me. But I was there over a year, and uh, then instead of learning English, it was a time when actually, uh, it was a Puerto Rican time, and I learned fluently Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so then I saw, uh, I'm not, not gonna learn English in New York. I ran all the way to California, Los Angeles, and he gave me excellent resume, and in half year of, uh, I took a job in Hotel Ambassador uh, in Hollywood, and uh, thanks to Bedia Havelka, he gave me excellent uh, resume. In half a year, I was a banker chef, and uh, I had it under my supervision every day, over 80, 80 cooks, which was very, very nice, you know, and excellent. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. We're running a little over time, so I am not going to torture you with those four stanzas <laughs> of the song, but we'll just do one more Jupaida, or if you would prefer Chupaida. <laughs> and Jupaida, Jupaida, ya te mamrada. Jupaida, Jupaida, ya te miluyu. And you're invited to some refreshments <laughs> behind you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.